Stay where you're at. Okay. Stay where you're at. Hey, can I get out? He's driving. I, I need units. I need units. Hey! Shots fired. Shots fired. Hey, can I jump out? Get out. Get out. Get out. Put your left hand up. Get out. This was the 80s. The Rayful Airmen crew, or as Antonio Jones called it, the RE crew, was one of the strongest crews in the city. One night in particular, according to Antonio, one of the top enforcers in the RE crew, he was in the alley with his partner Jerry and Red Jr. On the other side of that alley was about eight or nine guys, undercover cops. Antonio got the call on his walkie-talkie that some guys were creeping in the same alley. His guys spotted them, and without question, they pulled out their weapons and started dumping at the cops. Shots fired. No one was hit, but the cops were upset. And according to Antonio, two days later, those DC cops got word that it was him and his partner Jerry that shot at them. A contract was out. The cops spread the word to shoot them on sight if they were to run into the two enforcers and the RE crew. Rayful Airmen had reached within the police department. Lieutenant Mitchell delivered the news to Ray. Ray called Tonio and Jerry to meet on M Street. Thirty-something years later, here's the location where it all happened. Four hundred. Okay, so yeah. This is it at 400, um, 400 M Street Northeast. So apparently, uh, one of uh, Ray's grandmother lived on this street right here. I'm not sure which house it was, but they were basically block off some of these sections back then. They were barricade them so the feds couldn't drive through here. Yeah, so let's just say maybe like this alley. You can see that there's so many cuts so the feds could come through this way. The feds could come through that way. They will block off like this section and that section or something and maybe even that section too people might have to walk around it and this is this is this is one of the cuts and imagine now it's morning or it's daytime now but imagine it being nighttime and jerry antonio and one other guy are basically sitting and smoking and they get a call on the walkie talkie because people was up on the rooftops and they was watching from the rooftop their lookouts and their lookouts was being paid so much, you know, because I was looking at the prices or the um, the amounts on Google, what they were saying, they were saying like, um, they started off at like a thousand or something and they got up to like 3,000 a week. 3,000 a week now is good for anyone that, that's making that amount of money. Um, so you got to think back in 87, 86, maybe it was 86, um, cause, uh, Antonio said they started like right around at 84, the year I was born. So 85, 86 or 87 to be making 3k a week, man, shh, you was living good. So they were watching from up there and they get the call. And once they got the call, the, on the walkie talkie, they saw the guys approaching who they thought were just some guys trying to take over, but it actually wasn't. It was actually undercover cops. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, you been around this area a long time? Huh? Have you been living around this area a long time? Yeah, not oh, not a long time? Okay, yeah, because I was documenting the area over here, like Orleans and Morton's place. And um, I was just trying to get some information on the area, but you, you're not familiar with it? Like, no, I ain't familiar. Okay, all right. 8th Street. 8th Street? Back down on 8th Street. Okay. All right, I'm gonna walk through more first. Thanks. 
so and I, I remember how terrible this area was. And the reason how I remember is because my family lived over on 7th Street. We lived on 7th Street, um, um, well my family did, lived over on 7th Street, so it was crazy. Well, um, they busted this toe joint up and even with Orleans, you gonna cut through the alley. So again, they would block off a lot of this stuff back then. This is the one thing that I do know that I remember. I remember wholeheartedly seeing Orleans as a um, youngin, it's about 12, 13 years old. I remember seeing how deep it was, like one way in, one way out. That was it. Orleans Place and 7th Street. What a race. This Redman organization had to be sold up. more in place. This crew was nothing like any crew I heard of. They literally ran it like a legitimate business. The enforcers went to the gun range to work on target practice very often. This was well thought out and well put together. Ray would give Antonio a list of people that haven't paid what they owe. Tonio and Jerry wasn't no joke. They always collected. Ray was getting money on 5th and L Street Northeast and 5th and K Street Northeast. When you think of a top enforcer of a drug crew, you think about someone who handles any problems that threaten the whole organization. But Antonio Jones was more than that to Ray. He actually helped them set up shop like real businesses. What I mean is, he studied the streets, the traffic, the potential hazards, escape routes, talked to neighbors about areas in the community that would be off limits to drug sales to keep them happy, as well as give the kids a section of the strip free of drug dealing. So they utilized alleys. They worked with the community instead of against the community. Tonio said he used women workers sometimes at night on the strip to make sales and had them dress up like guys just in case if they served an undercover cop, he would have a hard time identifying them later when they go back to dressing normal. They used trash cans and old refrigerators and other items to block the alleyway for protection, preventing the cops from driving their cars through the alley. The cops would send the trash trucks to clean the alleys, but the RE crew would just do it again and again, and it worked for at least a couple of years, which is a long time in street time. Everything happened so fast in the streets. They also had surveillance on the rooftop watching all movements. They had walkie-talkies to relay info. Everything was ran tight, and this is how they beat the cops for so long. These are Antonio's words right here. Ray told me to go for it. 
He told me I had total control over everything and everybody. The first thing I did was move the whole operation up to the back alleys of Orleans and Morton Place Northeast. We dug in like I was taught by the old heads back in the day. I set up teams to watch the whole neighborhood and put a few people down on 5th and L Street too. The teams brought customers to the block from all over until they knew where we were 24-7. I eliminated all the dead weight. I fired most of the old dudes they had working for them because they were the ones stealing. Some of them got mad and were selling a lot of death behind my back. After I shot a few of them and put the knife in a few more, I guess they got the point. This guy Antonio Jones and Jerry Millington were no joke. These guys were the real deal. They were going to collect money everywhere, so they was not to be played with. But again, we up out of here, man. Make sure y'all like the video and comment down below, man. We got some more coming, some more real good footage already captured. So, man, y'all stay tuned. We out.